So before we um, before we begin the real meat of the session, I'd like to say a little bit about the Aperio Foundation. Aperio is the new parent organization for Sakai. Around 18 months ago, the Sakai Foundation merged with another pioneer of open source software in higher ed, JSIG, to form the Aperio Foundation, new foundation. In a nutshell, we believe that a single foundation would be more effective and provide a better umbrella for open source projects in higher ed. As you can see by that, uh, that mission statement there, we focus squarely on software to support academic mission delivery. We have a real focus on software to support and innovation to support learning, teaching, and research, and the infrastructure to, uh, to support mission delivery. If you're going to hop on the next one, great. Critical thing about Aperio is our software runs in thousands and universities and colleges worldwide. Software like uPortal, CAS, and Sakai, other projects, support literally hundreds of thousands of users. And Aperio, through direct membership and through a close working relationship with our French sister organization, the ASAP Consortium, represents a network of around 180 higher ed institutions working together to support that mission. Uh, we're a place to work together and share experiences. We're attracting new software projects either startups like the uh, Karuta Portfolio Initiative or mature communities like OpenCast Matterhorn. They're two examples of projects that are working through our incubation process. So Aperio is a place where collaborators can work also on new problems. Initiatives like our analytics work conducted in partnership with the Society for Learning Analytics Research are transforming research into practical software to support higher ed. So that's a, a brief flavor of what Aperio does, uh, but I'm sure you're here, more to, uh, here today to hear more about Sakai 10, some of those new features in the future of Sakai. So I will say welcome and hand you over to Neil. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Ian. Um, just since I started the recording a little bit late, and some people may be joining a little bit late, just give you an overview of what we're uh, doing today. Um, we have a uh, presentation, a short presentation I'll be doing on Sakai 10. Um, Ian just did an overview uh, of the Aperio Foundation. Dr. Uh, Chuck, Charles Severance will be doing um, more of the future Sakai, Sakai 11, and where that's going. And uh, Jeff Pash from uh, New York University will be then talking about the Sakai Institutional um, Interest Group and some of the projects that are launching out of that. And uh, if you have questions, please put them either on the chat or use uh, Twitter and use the hashtag uh, ha uh, pound Sakai webinar. Earlier this year, uh, late February, early March, we did a survey. We're doing a yearly survey. Uh, to see where people, where institutions are at with respect to their upgrade plans. And uh, this year was no different. And what we found was that at that time, two-thirds of the institutions uh, are planning to upgrade to Sakai 10. And what's really interesting to me about that is that's four months before Sakai 10 was even released. Uh, we just released it uh, late June. And to me, that shows a lot of confidence in the community in Sakai 10. And I also suspect that now that we have a tangible release, those numbers will go up even further. And of those who said they were upgrading, 81% uh, plan to upgrade by uh, 2015. So really, 100, you know, most of the community is planning to upgrade by, by next year. And after that survey, shortly after that, is we're in the throes of doing the Sakai release, which uh, many of you may know. We uh, set a scope. We put the features in. Uh, and then we do a number of rounds of testing and bug fixing. We were, uh, very much in the throes of doing the, that, that cycle. And I know we noticed that uh, it was 526 commits in April, which is a five-year high, and that made the Sakaiger uh, very happy and jumped for joy. So that's, that's quite a lot of great community activity. This is a word cloud that I created based on all the new features in Sakai 10. I just thought it was kind of interesting to do that uh, as a visual. Uh, I doubt that gradebook.default max displayed score rows really is a major feature in, uh, you know, like that it's occurring over and over, but uh, I'm guessing it's because of the length of that, that text. But you notice that gradebook is up there and assignments is up here and syllabus 
those were major uh, changes in Sakai, major improvements in Sakai 10. And uh, you'll notice default property, kind of an interesting cultural thing, a really useful cultural um, habit of the Sakai development community is that when new features are introduced, uh, oftentimes they'll create a property which allows institutions to customize, turn features on and off for their institution. That can also be really useful for experimental features. So Sakai 10, what are some of the highlights? So I'm, just a caveat that I'm, I'm giving you some of the highlights from uh, the perspective of, of myself and uh, strongly encourage you to find other resources at the end. I'll show other resources where you can find information about Sakai 10 because just because uh, there may be things that I don't cover here that might be of interest to your institution. So first of all, LTI version 2. Uh, for those of you who don't know, LTI is uh, Learning Tools Interoperability. It's an IMS standard and Sakai is the first LMS to get on version 2. So what is LTI? Uh, briefly, what LTI is, is an easy way to integrate external tools, tools that are outside Sakai. And educational tools that follow the LTI standard can be plugged into any LMS, including Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, any, any um, LMS that's out there that supports the LTI standard, which all the major ones do. What's significant about version 2 is that it's more extensible and it has potential for deeper integrations with um, external tools, and that Sakai is the first one adopting it and leading the way in standards. Resources, the main uh, feature that was added in resources is drag and drop, which I expect will be really popular. It allows you to take literally from your Mac or PC desktop and drag files directly into resources to add them. And, uh, on Chrome browsers, you can even drag whole folders of files. And hopefully in the future, as other browsers kind of update and get more current, that will become uh, more ubiquitous. The assignments tool. The assignments tool, in my estimation, is one of the biggest uh, um, new features, a couple of new features that were added there. One's peer review, which I'm going to go into a bit more detail, so I'm not going to cover it right this second. And the other one is group assignments. And with group assignments, you may know, if you're familiar with Sakai, that <clears throat> um, groups have been part of Sakai for a long time. And in assignments, you have the ability, you've had the ability for a long time to say, I'm, I'm publishing this assignment, and I'm just restricting it to these one or two or three groups or sections in my course. What group assignments does is it allow, it's a whole, totally different thing. It's not about access, it's about uh, submission of assignments. It allows you as an instructor to say, I want this assignment to be done by groups and for them to submit the assignments as a group. So if I'm in a group with uh, Sally and Henry, any one of us can submit the assignment <clears throat> on behalf of our group. The instructor will grade it and that grade will apply to all of us equally and of course the instructor has overrides. Test and quizzes, a uh, number of new features there. It has a couple of new question types calculated questions and extended matching items. Calculated questions um, allow you to create variables that Sakai can calculate on the fly and those variables can have like ranges of numbers so that each student can kind of have a customized uh, um, particular specific problem uh, that, that it shows for them. Extended matching items is the same as the, is similar to the matching items that's already in Sakai. However, the difference is that in the matching items in the test and quiz module uh, from 2.9 and earlier, it's a one-to-one -one match. In extended matching items, it's many-to-many. -many. Uh, improved precision and numeric answers, um, and there's also a accordion-style quiz setup, which I find is makes the uh, experience of setting up your um, test much, much simpler. Lessons. So lessons continues to grow in popularity and interest. And um, for Sakai 10, compared to Sakai 2.9, it was, so Lessons was introduced into the core of Sakai in uh, Sakai 2.9. And in Sakai 10, we have uh, the toolbar simplified. It has better support for audio and video, new table of contents, uh, support for inline use of polls, and to kind of uh, reiterate that uh, standards um, piece that I was talking about earlier with LTI, common cartridge support is improving. In fact, with 10.1, which should be released in the, in the next several weeks, a maintenance release on Sakai 10, we'll have support for uh, Common Cartridge version 1.3, 
and significant testing was done to make sure that our common cartridge output is compatible with other LMSs. For example, a lot of testing was put in to be compatible with, uh, with Canvas, which makes it easy to take your content out of the lessons tool, move it into other uh, learning management systems that support common cartridge and, and back the other way. CK Editor. So what the CK Editor is also known as the Rich Text Editor or the WYSIWYG Editor. It's basically in every tool in Sakai where you have editing and you can change the text to make it bold, italic, uh, add in images, that sort of thing. That's what the CK Editor is. It's used everywhere. And for this version, audio recording has been added and a math formula builders in there and, and word counts. So real significant new features and those are available in all the tools that use the CK Editor. Gradebook. Uh, the big feature addition in Gradebook is extra credit. Uh, of course, there are ways, ways of working around tools, but now you can specify a particular gradebook item as being an extra credit grade so that it will not count against the student, only in favor of the student if you, the instructor, you know, assign uh, points. And caching. So caching is one of those things that's in the back end that the community doesn't necessarily see as much of. Um, you know, a lot of back-end technical work to make Sakai stable and robust and be able to handle lots and lots of users. And caching is one of those things. And what's been added in Sakai 10 is support for JSR 107 standards and JCache. And what the JSR 107 standards are, are they're standard APIs in the industry. And that means that you're not tied to a particular open source solution or commercial solution for doing the caching. And what caching is, again, it's something that makes your system able to support a lot more users and have your system run more robustly and quickly. So you see another example of, uh, of standards in Sakai. And there's a lot more, and as I mentioned a couple, in a, in a few minutes I'll um, point you to resources where you can read about all the features in Sakai in detail or get overviews from um, other folks who have posted about Sakai 10 and given their uh, take on what they think is important. I mentioned that I was going to show the, uh, go into more depth in the peer assessment tool in Sakai. And peer assessment is something that's become a lot more popular with the advent of MOOCs, which are massively online open courses. And the idea is that students can grade each other's work. And then that way they're really engaged in the thought process of what makes a good submission for the assignment. Um, in this very short video, what I'm going to show it, the setup is that I, as an instructor, have created an assignment. I have made it uh, set up for peer assessment. I put in the review instructions for the students. The students have taken the assignment, and now this is one student who is grading other students in the class. So the first thing you notice, I set it up as anonymous, so that we'll just show student one, student two. I set it up in this case for two students. Uh, for, for, in other words, each student to have to review two other students' work. I could set that's a configurable number. I put instructions for the reviewer in there, which could be used, for example, for a rubric of how to, how to grade the uh, assignments. There's an example of an assignment submission on the French Revolution. And now, as the student, I am grading my fellow uh, student. Put in points, just like if you were an instructor, and put in the comments. So I'm going to skip here just to go a little bit faster. <clears throat> trying to skip over a little bit here. And so now I'm going to the second student. Same kind of process. I go through, I have the instructor review, um, uh, instructions on how to review the submission. I see the actual submission. If there was attachments there, I can see the attachments, provide the points, and um, put in the, the review. At the end of all that, those grades go into the grade book, and the instructor can see what comments the students have given to each other, can override the grades, has full control. So you share student one and student two. I've graded both of those as a student. So what are some of the takeaways from uh, Sakai 10? Well, first of all, there's lots of great resources. This was a really, really quick uh, overview of some of the major features in Sakai 10. Um, there's a uh, blog post on the Long site website. There's a blog post on Unicon site on Sakai, what they think are the important features. Uh, Dr. Chuck has written a really good blog post on Sakai 10 as well. 
There's an official press release, which includes a short video on some of the behind the scenes uh, uh, thinking that went into how we get features into Sakai 10 and what are some important ones. And there's official release notes. We have all the details and many, many places to download Sakai. So off the release notes, you can download the actual source code. You can download a binary. Same thing with the gener generic www.sakaiproject.org site. Um, we have an official download page. That, and really the, the message with that is because it's open source, you know, download it, use it, play with it, um, check out the code. That's what open source is about. Also, what I've been hearing a lot from the development community, and it's generally true in Sakai, we like to keep, you know, Sakai community um, has the resources, only has the resources to maintain about two releases back. So right now the official releases are Sakai 10 and Sakai 2.9. And what I'm hearing from the development community is a strong push to get people to think about moving to Sakai 10, which sounds like people, you know, institutions are already doing. And the reason for that is that there's going to be a lot of uh, security fix. There are a lot of security fixes in Sakai 10, a lot of new, great new features in Sakai 10, better performance. Um, and that's where a lot of the attention is going to go uh, to further develop it. There's already schools using Sakai 10, including University of Cape Town, which announced that on the development list, the Sakai dev list, uh, um, very recently. Um, also, uh, Universidad Internacional de Rioja, which I hope I pronounced roughly about right, UNIR. I think they're the first Spanish university to uh, jump onto Sakai 10. University of Ghana. <clears throat> Dayton University is, uh, was using Sakai, the, the test and quiz version of Sakai 10, which is called Samago, with 2.9 months before Sakai 10 was officially released, um, which shows some of the modularity of, what, of how Sakai uh, works. And I've been informed by Longsight that they've already upgraded about 20% of their clients to Sakai 10, less than one month after Sakai 10 was released. I encourage you to share your success if you're upgrading to Sakai 10. Uh, update your school's information um, on, there's, we have a JIRA site where you can update the specifics of your institution's um, pilot or production deployment of Sakai and send an email to the community. It's a great way for the community to celebrate and also to make those connections because that's how uh, the community works as we uh, support each other. So, uh, so thank you. And now we'll move on to the next part. So I'll give up the screen sharing here. Were there any questions that I should field or are um, they waiting for the end? I see some questions came in. Okay. Okay, there's comments. Hey, Neil, you might want to um, you might want to cut and paste some of those URLs into the chat sort of while I'm talking. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks. Okay, so um, so you might want to cut and paste some of those URLs into the chat so people can cut them and paste them themselves instead of trying to rerun the recording. So my name is Charles Severance, and I'm going to talk to you uh, real quickly about Sakai 11. I'm the current chair of the Sakai Project Management Committee, and that's sort of like the management arm of Sakai. I'm a faculty member at the University of Michigan, and I, um, I, I work for Longsight as well. Uh, they support. But um, I'm really, at this point, not speaking for Longsight. I'm not speaking for the University of Michigan. I'm not really speaking for anybody. Those of you who know me know that no one would ever give me permission to speak on their behalf um, because I'm, you know, I say crazy things. So I'm just talking about the community. And so um, the community is all of us added up. And, um, and so, that, so I'm talking about things that we think are resources and our best guess as to what's going on. Uh, something's really quite different in the Sakai community in the last 12 months. Um, we historically have been very averse to uh, roadmap, uh, to any kind of a, a, a forward-looking prediction of what it was we were going to do. And that's because uh, resources come and go, and uh, university resources come and go. But we now have, uh, with the PMC, real clear and strong governance of the Sakai uh, technical directions, and we're, we're sort of we're on the same page more and more. And the other thing that's happening is commercial providers uh, like Longsight, Asahi, Net, and Unicon have more predictable resources than, say, even universities did a few years ago. And so there are some things that we can have a pretty good chance that they're going to happen. And so we really have switched, starting in January of this year, from being very roadmap averse to being very pro-roadmap. And so there's a, a standard uh, Perio meeting now that we have in the June-ish time frame, the summer meeting where we kind of all get together. But we also have a January meeting. 
And the January meeting is kind of like a more of a retreat where we kind of really think through a bunch of stuff and we bring folks together. Um, you shouldn't think of this as only technical people. Uh, pretty much anyone who has got a leadership role, technical or non-technical, should come to this. It's where we sort of build the roadmap for the next release. And so we build a roadmap in January of 2014. Um, and if you look at a lot of other roadmaps, they're very uh, exciting and they have animation and stuff. And our, our roadmap is a, uh, a wiki page. And you say, well, that's not very pretty and it's not very, doesn't have any icons or anything on it. But um, our roadmap has one advantage, and that has to do with how we are sort of radically open. You can actually look at our roadmap, and you can compare the things that were added and the things that were moved from January to June of this year. So this roadmap is an active and live document. People who see things, well, oops, the resources didn't turn out the way we thought, so we're going to take something out, or we're going to move it to later, or we, we, we've gotten ahead. And so you, you can, the community, it in, in a very radically open fashion, can completely watch not just what our roadmap says, but the evolution of the roadmap, and then can kind of run back in history and see what we said and how we changed, and perhaps even uh, why we changed. And so one of the good things about this very flexible roadmap um, is that sometimes things even work better than we think. Sometimes things, worse, things work worse than we think, and sometimes, think we're, sometimes things work better than we thought. And if you sort of look closely, You'll see that some things were taken off of the roadmap, but this thing was not, uh, the replacement of access soap services was not taken off because of lack of resources. It was taken off because we did it faster. So we had put something in January on the roadmap, and so we sit there in January, and we figure, oh, we should do this for 11, we should do this for 11, and some of the things just worked out well, and we got them done so quickly that we did them in 10. So sometimes things will move out, when they have less resources, or they become more difficult, or they'll move forward. And so uh, I encourage you to take a look at our, our roadmap and uh, participate, whether it's at a Sakai meeting or uh, through any other, uh, any other processes in this roadmap. Um, and Jeff, in a bit, will give you better ways to, even better ways to participate than we've had in the past. So if I quickly look down the list of things that were on that roadmap, um, Probably the biggest thing is uh, Project Morpheus. When we, we our code names are often uh, homage to the, the Matrix movie, and so Project Morpheus is the follow-on to Project Neo, which was our 2.9 portal. And we're going to do a responsive design. Um, and, and the next big thing we think we'll do is move the University of Michigan dashboard into trunk, and then augment that with a mobile application. It might be a little it, in the beginning, it'll sort of be simple, but uh, we'll, we hope by 11 to have a mobile application for Sakai. Improving Samago with a hotspot questions type. Uh, a user interface redesign project for, uh, for lessons. I saw a comment or two that, you know, even though we think we improved it between 9 and 10, uh, people say, no, it can be improved more. And I think everyone sort of agrees that, you know, we're, we're, only, we're only like two years into lessons, and uh, we can learn a bunch about um, a big thing that happened in 10 was uh, to make Sakai more friendly to cloud and virtual hosting environments to make our configuration properties more dynamic, but we don't have a, we can change them, but we don't have a really slick user interface for changing them so that you can actually change your production properties in a screen, hit a button, and boom, things just change. And Snap is a, uh, is a visualization for discussions. There have been some neat stuff from Marist that showed how it could be used by changing the plugin, but we actually want to change the markup in discussions so that you can visualize threaded discussions using the SNAP plugin. So this is the first uh, reveal of uh, the new uh, Morpheus uh, skin. Uh, the Morpheus skin is a flattening to look more like a sort of modern Twitter bootstrap-like application. And, uh, and, and so it's, a, it's, a real, it's really trying to move what Sakai looks like into the way uh, the current sort of very flat, but, but very movable blocks, right? And so this is a, uh, and is a, a mock up of what the main screen would look like on a desktop. But the key thing to uh, a responsive design is the exact same web page with no work on the part of the user, if viewed on a smaller device, will simply get smaller, right? And so the navigation, as you can see, tucks up into the top, um, and the, the the boxes that were horizontal or horizontal plus vertical are all no vertical, and now you have to 
to scan up to see these things, and the navigation kind of hides in these little hamburger item icons. And so if you pop the left hamburger icon, you kind of see the classes, and so you can switch from class to class. And then you can also pop up the navigation within class, and things move around. And you should be able to see this in a couple of weeks or less, um, as we hope to put this thing into trunk. Um, I'll paste this into the chat later. Uh, there is a, a, a tomorrow, I believe. Uh, Mark Riley is the, uh, the lead on from New York University is the lead on Morpheus, and there is kind of a briefing. Uh, this is such a dramatic change to Sakai that we are going to be communicating a lot about it. And the other thing we're probably going to be doing is we're probably going to be doing uh, light quality assurance passes over the code long before the 11 release because we're going to put this in and make it default, which is which is scary, but it's the but we're going to change things, and we're also going to take iframes away, and we're going to make that the default. And unlike some of the other things we've done with the portal and user interface, we're not going to have a compatibility mode. Um, by 11, this will be our only user interface, um, and that's because we can't we can't keep the old mode in. We have to just make the tools work with the new mode, and so we're going to put it in, and then we're going to fix everything, and then we give we're giving ourselves a good long time to restabilize everything. And so this is a, a very, very bold thing, and the whole community is going to be involved in finishing this up. But I think by the time we make it to 11, it is going to be absolutely uh, world class, and it will be the best learning management system user interface bar none. Other things uh, in Sakai 11 that we're hoping for is like improving uh, LTI2 services, uh, LTI2 service registry, because we're going to start uh, adding not just new standards from IMS, but we're going to add extensions so we can build better and better LTI tools rather than building more and more Sakai tools. Uh, support for IMS Common Cartridge 1.3, I think that might actually not make it into Sakai 11 because I think that might actually make it into Sakai 10.1. Um, and there's another problem with our roadmap is sometimes we're just too fast. The uh, sensor API, the caliper that allows the learning analytics to happen, and then to move our development from the SVN source code management to Git. Another thing that we do is we have stretch goals. And these uh, stretch goals are things that, you know, they're kind of less than a 50% chance of getting funded. Uh, we, we can turn these into greater than 50%, I mean, less than 50% chance of success unless somebody gets really interested in it and either brings some talent to the party or brings some resources to the party. These are the kinds of things that we would really like to do in 11, but um, we don't really, as a, as a collective group, we don't really believe they're likely. So we're not trying to tell you, oh, that's going to be here. These are the things we hope could be there, and some of them will almost certainly be there, but not all of them, because this is just more resources. We don't have enough resources. And so I think that's my last slide. Yeah, that's my last slide. And so uh, I will leave this on um, the fact that we have an aggressive uh, Sakai roadmap of things we uh, expect to be in. I think that uh, you'll be very impressed with Sakai 11. It'll be a, a, a dramatic improvement in our user interface and our capabilities as well. And, uh, and with that, I am going to uh, turn off my screen sharing and hand it back to Jeff. And we'll do questions at the end. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Great. Looks great. Okay. So, uh, so thanks. The Sakai Institutional Interest Group, or SIG, um, formed out of conversations between uh, Ian, Marist College, Stanford, and NYU at the uh, Piero camp in Phoenix that was that Chuck mentioned earlier. Um, and we also had a birds of a feather at the Apira conference where we introduced the group and its goals um, and got input from both participants. So today I just want to briefly highlight our current activities and talk about next steps for the group. So the goals for the group are very straightforward. So firstly, to provide a framework for funding collaborative projects. And that's what I'll focus on today. The second and third goals, um, discovering shared institutional needs for Sakai and facilitating collaboration and knowledge sharing among institutions are important and certainly broad goals in themselves. Um, and they also support the first goal of forming and funding collaborative projects. 
So for the first goal, when we met at the conference and talked about community funded projects, the idea of a fundraising, a fundraising site came up many times. So here are designs for that site, or rather a set of pages um, for the Sakai website. So this would be a place where folks um, can go and see what collaborative projects are out there, see the progress, um, and of course contribute. Um, so this slide just shows a dashboard where you can see the status of different projects in terms of funding, um, and you'd have the ability to drill down into specific projects um, to see the details, who's leading it, the groups that are contributing, um, and of course a nice big juicy button where you can click to contribute. Um, so, and that would then present you with a simple form to fill out where you, that would go to the project lead and the SIG, and then we'll arrange for people to come um, take your money. Um, so we're working with Ian to get uh, these pages up over the next couple months. Um, but we've started already, um, as, and this has been alluded to already. So we have, we have two collaborative projects in the works now. Um, there's the Lessons Enhancement Project, um, which arose out of work of the Teaching and Learning Group. Josh Barron is the contact and can provide more information. You can also find information on the Teaching and Learning uh, Group site. Um, we're also proposing a Gradebook Enhancement Project. Um, there will be more information coming um, on that, but in the interim, I'm the contact for that initiative um, if you're interested in learning more or um, participating. So there are projects in the work now, and we'll get those projects up on that site, um, that funding site, um, once it's live. Um, so for the, for the sake of time today, I know we want to um, spend a lot of time with questions. I won't go deeply into the second two goals of the group, um, discovering shared institutional needs for Sakai and facilitating collaboration. As I said, you know, they're very important and, and broad. We have some thoughts on those and, and how we could use existing tools and practices in the community to address them, um, but also potentially some, some, some new tools. So for example, um, with discovering shared needs, um, we've, we've looked at you know, different kinds of um, online idea forums. I know that the OAE project used one of these at some point. Um, NYU has been using a different project for uh, a product for a few years. So, so there are different possibilities here and work to be done in, the, in these areas. So I want to take this as an opportunity to ask folks, you know, who would be interested in drilling into those different areas to get involved um, and participate with, uh, with the SIG, the Sakai Institutional Interest Group. Uh, which brings us to next steps. Um, so we are planning to have a meeting at EDUCAUSE. Um, we're working um, with Ian on that. Um, we'll continue work on the funding site that I showed today. Um, and then for more information, and if you want to start participating in, in this group, um, there's an alias uh, you can contact, and I will throw that into the chat as well. Um, so that's just a, a brief update on the group. And now I'll turn it back over to, um, to Ian and Neil for um, questions that have been posted in the chat. Thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, so there were some questions that uh, came through, I think, all on the chat. It looks like on Twitter it's mostly uh, comments. I don't see any questions from there. Um, so one question was, what's going on with Sakai to go? Um, I'm, I don't really know how to answer that. I've seen their, their uh, tweets, um, and I think, but I'm not really, I don't really know anything about, you know, what they're working on or when it's going to be released or how it fits in. So I don't know if anyone else uh, on the call happens to know anything about sakai to go but I, I don't. Um, the other questions is someone you can put in the chat if you happen to know. Um, the other question, let's see. Uh, well, when the iframes came up, there was a lot of woohooing and whoop and yay and woot <laughs> and yes uh, and awesome and all that sort of thing. Um, I confirmed that uh, in Sakai 10.1, uh, support for IMS Common Cartridge 1.3 is, is available, and Sakai 10.1 should be released in the next few weeks or, or so. Um, there's a question about what is the timeline for Sakai 11, and Dr. Chuck responded, timeline is June 2015. Yeah, we don't have an exact timeline laid out in terms of milestones, but generally the community's been going for about a release a year, so that's a pretty, a pretty good estimate. 
Um, I think there was a qu request for a link to the roadmap page, and there it is. So you can look in the chat for that. Let's see. Uh, looks like the questions are starting to come in a bit more, but I don't lose my place. Um, there were a few audio problems on this session, so it's interesting to know. Um, and so there's also so there were the links I posted the links from per request uh, from uh, the Sakai 10 presentation. You know, other places you can go read about Sakai 10. And Dr. Chuck, who's listed as Chuck S2 here, um, posted uh, the link to the meeting for the Morpheus meeting for tomorrow. Um, can the contributor page be a, pages be applied to other projects? CAS, uPortal. Um, oh, are you talking? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about. Uh, um, for I'm not sure if you mean what you mean, Jesus. <coughs> Maybe you can qualify. I'm not sure if you mean like contributor pages of who's contributing to the project, or do you mean like what Jeff was presenting about who's contributing to particular uh, projects? I'm guessing that's what you mean, since that would be more uh, current. It's what we're talking about. Um, so that would be a, that would be a good a Perio question. I don't know if Ian, if you have any thoughts on that. So the question. Yeah, is I what, already. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I, sorry. I posted a reply into the uh, into the chat. What we want to do is some prototyping um, around those kind of contribution charts and the page that Jack showed. And when we've ironed the wrinkles out, then yes, that's going to be available for uh, for the whole range of Aperio projects that want to take advantage of it. Thank you. Um, I see the next question is the OSP status is. Deprecations, removals. Um, do we have a date for that deprecation? Um, in Sakai 10, um, OSP is still available. Uh, it's it's uh, it's been removed. It, there's a property to um, specify whether that's one of the site types that can be created. That property has been turned off by default in Sakai 10, but it's very simple to flip that switch on for Sakai 10. Uh, for Sakai 11, the plan right now, as far as I know, is to completely remove OSP. Uh, which is the portfolio tool for Sakai. However, there's a really uh, uh, promising and robust effort uh, for a new portfolio system uh, that would use LTI, so it would be external to Sakai. Um, so that's a thing uh, we can post a link in here. And if you're interested in learning more about that, we have a portfolio. There's a portfolio group in the Perio community, and I believe that that um, portfolio product is in uh, incubation. Is that right, Ian? That's correct. Yeah. Neil, there was a question from Marilyn about what about the ability to tie resources to Dropbox, OneDrive, etc. I don't know whether either you or Chuck would like to make any comment about that. Yeah, Chuck, would you like to take that one? Yeah, I don't know enough to comment about that. Um, it, it, I, I'm sure that it's, uh, it's, it's something that a lot of people want. Um, I don't know if it's currently in the stretch goals or not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I could imagine basically if the, if the tool supported LTI, I imagine that it would be possible to integrate them, but I don't. That's beyond uh, my technical acumen. So, so Neil, Neil, there's a question let, that, that I could answer. Andrew's question about RWiki. Yeah. Um, there, so and I'll, I'll also talk about OSP a little bit while I got the microphone. So. The, uh, the if you want to get a, a bunch of people in the Sakai community arguing, just bring up what to happen about RWiki because RWiki, of course, is, uh, is is woefully obsolete, but it's our only wiki tool. And so, um, smile, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so and the other the other thing that's continuously brought up is that the, all the people that win the teaching was win the teaching with Sakai award use the wiki. So that also makes it difficult to simply remove the wiki. Um, my hope, and this is a stretch goal, and you saw it in stretch goal, is to, um, to integrate XWiki into Sakai. But not just integrate XWiki into Sakai, but use IMS Learning Tools interoperability to integrate XWiki capabilities into Sakai um, in a way that you could also integrate it into Canvas or any other learning management system as a new model of uh, how we're going to do software development. And there's a couple of uh, little nascent things that are happening right now. One that Aaron Sikoski of Unicon is quietly doing in GitHub to build a, a way to, to uh, create a WAR file that's an LTI tool. And, and 
Um, if you start imagining, what we'll do is we'll actually have uh, tools inside Sakai. They're no longer uh, Sakai tools, but they're LTI tools. They just happen to run the same Tomcat with the rest of Sakai, and we plug them in. And so it's, it's my hope that potentially XWiki would be the first tool of this kind that instead of uh, using the request filter and all that other stuff that we use in Sakai, but instead it actually uses LTI2 uh, to connect to the rest of Sakai. And so, you know, Aaron, Aaron's playing with infrastructure that makes that feasible. I've been trying to encourage people to get excited about the notion of using LTI2 to plug in the XWiki capability. And then, you know, if we, were, if we really wanted to get rid of our wiki, then all we do is create a conversion that would move all the data to XWiki and uh, history and all that stuff. And then we just use XWiki from this point forward. And that would be a win-win, win-win, win-win-win situation. Um, if we could achieve that. And so I'm, I'm begging and pushing and cajoling and squeezing whatever I can do behind the scenes to get that to happen because it advances about 20 of my own personal causes to, to use LTI and to get out of the business of more Sakai tools, more Sakai tools, but instead more LTI tools. So um, if, if, uh, if we have a nice tailwind all year and every, you know, everything goes smoothly and we get good QA on the new Morpheus thing and we get bored by October, then who knows, maybe people will jump up and, and work on that. Um, I, Andrew, I don't know, if there was a blogging, uh, XWiki is an amazing piece of product because it's a JAR file. It's, it's rare that a something like that says, I'll also be a JAR file rather than just a giant user interface. So that's what's cool about, about XWiki. Um, and so, so maybe there's a blogger that could do it, but uh, the, like MediaWiki, won't go in as smoothly as XWiki because MediaWiki is like a piece of software that you have to just beat and you have to beat its user interface. You've got to beat a lot of things, but XWiki is more of a utility. So it's really structured in a way that, that could work ideally. And that's why XWiki, I'm hoping, is the first example of doing this really, really well because XWiki is very friendly to this approach. I want to go back a little bit to the OSP stuff, and that's, that's another one. It doesn't start quite as big as an argument among us to say something about uh, OSP. Um, the, the, the problem we have with OSP is that we don't QA it, and we're putting code out that we're not QAing. So what I think our compromise position this time next year will be that Sakai 11 will not have uh, OSP in it, but we are not going to harm OSP in any way. We're going to leave it sitting in the source tree, and any school that really wants OSP just checks it out, right? And so, so we're just really saying... We're communicating that the code we release in Sakai 11 is the code that we've done quality assurance work on. And so by keeping OSP in, we're communicating, we're, we're kind of misleading people to say that that's whatever. But if you've got OSP working on your campus and it works fine for you, the code's not going away, you just check it out, we're not going to consciously break it, we don't expect there be any problems to run the OSP in 11, we're just not going to include it in the release. It's kind of a signal that says we want to move to more of a Karuta kind of thing. And in the removal of OSP, that gives a, that put pressure on us to give services to Karuta in a way that makes a Karuta a successful tool in the Sakai environment. I think it might not be this time next year, but we'll see. You never know how that goes, right? Um, and so th that's the transition for OSP. We're not going to yank it completely. We're going to take it out, but if you want to keep it, you just like put her back in. We're just trying to communicate overall that that code is not code we see ours as, as, as part of core for long term. I see here that uh, somebody from Sakai to Go posted. See left yeah, we got to get. I saw that too. I'm I like. I'm sorry. I didn't know about this, and that's my mistake. So um, I'll 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 take some time to go to take a look at Sakai to Go. Can't find any websites. Can't find any websites on Sakai to go. See it with Twitter, but I. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing any other questions on the uh, list at the moment. Oh, I see one. Can we push Adrian Fish to do the same with blogging? <laughs> you mean like, uh, Andrew, I guess you mean like do an LTI, like a blogging tool with an LTI interface, that kind of thing? Yes, please. Yeah, and so, 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 Andrew, let me. So, so there's XWiki is kind of unique in that XWiki gives us a jar file, and we think that we have a decent chance of wrapping it as an LTI tool without and getting all of its all of its tasty goodness without <coughs> having to build code. 
we might be able to convince Adrian Fish. I'm not sure there's a blog.jar sitting out there the way there is in xwiki.jar. Um, but we could imagine that Adrian Fish, who is historically does crazy things just because, I don't know, he's got spare time, um, he might decide that what he wants to do is create a blog tool that's really based on LTI instead of a blog tool that's Sakai. And then he could make a, another WAR file that would drop into Sakai or, or could be hosted and plugged into Canvas. And, um, and again, that might be more fun than trying to keep a Sakai tool working. Um, yeah. uh, oh. Holy mackerel, Andrew. How about you just say like star dot star goes in LTI to Sakai? I mean, but uh, so you're 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 mentioning let's do WordPress. Uh, every time I look at WordPress, I'm I'm highly covetous of what WordPress does. Um, but WordPress itself is not really very good as a utility. It it doesn't plug into other things. It expects everything to plug into it, and that that then becomes really hard. So I'm curious uh, if there's any questions about the Sakai uh, institutional interest group and uh, you know, some of the projects that are being spearheaded there, what people think on that. Okay, several pe couple people are typing. Yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff, do you want to comment a little bit about the idea behind uh, Mariano made a comment on the uh, screenshots that you created for the Sakai website. You want to talk a little bit about those a little more, or does anyone have any questions on those? They seem pretty. Yeah. They seem pretty clear. I kind of, that's yeah. what's so nice about them. We, yeah, we really wanted to do something um, pretty basic to start with. You know, with sort of that that simple dashboard. Um, you know, our hope is that eventually you see a large number of projects on that dashboard. Um, you know, for funding and then be able to sort of track those all the way through. Um, and over the past few months, um, you know, we've been working with Ian and others on, you know, the logistics around how not only institutions, um, but also um, commercial uh, affiliates can um, sort of work towards, um, you know, funding projects jointly. Um, and there's still some details that we're working out around that. Um, but with the other with the other goals of the group, and this is one of the reasons why you know we'd like to get other folks involved, um, you know, finding out what those shared interests are and, and starting to get projects, um, you know, sort of started um, and determine sort of where that interest is, so um, you know, projects can coalesce. I mean, that's that's the work we have ahead of us. So you know, I mentioned that we wanted to get a, a meeting, you know, around you know, over the time of of EDUCAUSE that, you know, that people would obviously be able to join remotely as well. Um, but yeah, we, we want to get the, that site, you know, the basic site working um, and then sort of work towards those other goals. Jeff, I see a, a comment from Dr. Chuck that he gets, a, he gets questions sometimes on how someone can get started in, the, uh, in, the, in that SIG. Uh, yeah, so I, I posted, um, I posted an email alias there earlier um, if folks want to get involved. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to send something out for uh, the next the next meeting we have. Um, so yeah, just drop drop us a uh, drop us a note there and you know in the coming weeks we'll be sending out more information. And I see Josh yeah. uh, so the, made it. So, the, so so the the SIG is gonna have open calls where folks can, can raise things, but the, the primary purpose is to get folks from institutions who are willing to consider making a commitment. And Mariano, I think you just nailed it in your question. You know, most of the time, a lot of information gets lost in lists. We're looking at a context where we don't just expect large contributions from large schools, but we have to find effective ways of garnering smaller contributions from more schools 
without being overcome by the overhead. So I think that the ideas that, that Jeff mocked up for the, uh, for the website are a really important step forward for, for surfacing that. Uh, and I, I think it's going to be a critical part of the future. Uh, I, think, I think the key thing that I would add to that, um, Jeff, is that um, in the beginning, it's not going to be some kind of a highly technology-centered process. Jeff, you are going to help make things happen, right? There's not like a submit new thing button and a this button. The thing to do is to talk to a human, mostly Jeff, to kind of get stuff in. And uh, instead of trying to build a whole Kickstarter-like infrastructure, the idea is, is we have a Kickstarter-like page that ultimately stuff happens mostly human to human rather than building a match of technology infrastructure to make it massively automated like Twitter, right? Yeah. So it's about send the note to Jeff or send the note to this email and expect to talk to a human to get started in this process at the beginning. Yep, and I'll say if you're on the call and you are a human and you also want to be involved in that process, we could, we could always use that help. Um, so let me know. Cool. Any other uh, any other questions or comments? What if I have a robot that wants to contribute? That's a that's a good question. You want to take that one, Jeff? <laughs> we'll, we'll need to talk offline. Right. Oh, thank you, Rebe Rebecca, for reminding uh, reminding us about that. There is there's Sakai virtual conference. It's totally online. It's November seventh. Um, the registration is going to be open really soon, probably like around this Friday or so, and that's geared towards uh, teaching and learning. So it's a little bit more, there, there will be some technical presentations, but primarily it's focused on teaching and learning. So be on the lookout for that. That might be another place to kind of promote these kinds of uh, discussions. You can run Sakai on a Raspberry Pi for your robot. <laughs> okay. Any other, any other serious questions? I know we're, we're down to about the last uh, several minutes of the of the call. Thanks, Josh. Oh yes, thanks, Wilma. So one one kind of cool thing that the uh, uh, Sakai Virtual Conference Committee has been uh, discussing and is, is planning to do is have a small fee for uh, participating in the conference, and that fee is going towards uh, Sakai development. To be determined exactly where, with input from from the community and from participants. So the the, the um, structure and Wilma, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's like fifty dollars per participant. Yep. Okay, we have time for maybe one or two more uh, questions. And just uh, so you know, the uh, the Sakai Virtual Conference is a community effort. Thanks to Wilma and Longsight for kicking it off, but it also is, is um, community planning and community participation. Some interesting information, CS as well. It seems like we're kind of wound down, um, so I think it's probably a good time to close out the call unless they'll give uh, just a few more seconds because a couple people are typing and then uh, say thank you to everybody and uh, and uh, and goodbye for next time. Registration is coming soon for the virtual conference. So that, that should be out within uh, about the next week or so. And you'll see that on the usual list. And that's gonna be that's gonna be done that's gonna be done through Eventbrite, right? Or yeah, the registration some of it. through Eventbrite, right. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. I, I think it feels like a good time to, uh, to um, end the call. Cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Take care.